Hi, this is Paul Bratby, and this is an overview of my XPRAT Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. This is a trading view version, but it's available for lots of other uh, trading platforms. So what I'm going to go through is two stocks in the daily time frame because I, I really enjoy um, swing trading stocks with this Elliott Wave, with that fifth wave move. I'm going to go through this one trade that's, that's happened, it's gone, uh, and there's videos back um, uh, in the YouTube channel um, actually setting this trade up and then the follow up. Um, and then I'm going to go through a new potential trade as well. Uh, so let's go through this current trade. The channel is not part of the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. I always draw the channels on and you'll see that on the next one as well. But everything else is part there and we'll go through it. So the main thing is with the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite, we always look for the start of uh, the current trend. There is a longer term trend here, but really when I see uh, this, uh, these lows here with the stochastic underneath uh, in the oversold zone there and we're testing the bottom, big support on that channel, that's really the start of my trend that I'm interested in measuring. Uh, then we, we have this wave 4 pullback. Now this is the important bit, okay. So the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite, once you've isolated that, labels it 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, obviously in this case it's a 5 because it's already hit the target and gone through a little bit. Uh, but the main thing is uh, the indicator suite helps you understand the behavior of this wave 4 pullback. So the first thing to note is the wave 4 finds support in this red zone. These are our probability pullback zone, green, amber, red. Red is 75%. If it finds support in here, uh, or resistance if you're going short, uh, we are you know we've got a 75% probability it's going to go on and hit this automated fifth wave target zone. Amber is 80%, green is 85% probabilities. So we found support in the last chance saloon. Uh, we, uh, on the false breakout stochastic was part of the Elliott Wave indicator suite. We have these yellow dots during that wave three, which denote a really strong bullish trends, false breakouts of that stochastic in the overbought zone. Then we pull back down and cross over in the oversold zone during the wave four. Good, that's good behavior for the wave four. The next thing is our Elliott Wave Oscillator down here. During this Wave 4, we teach people how to measure this, and that Wave 4 on the Oscillator should pull back between 90 and 140. You see, just tested that 140 on the crowning there. So again, we're, we're building up a picture of the performance of that Wave 4, and it's behaving very, very well. One other thing, uh, and again, it's a good addition, it's not part of the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite, it's called the EMA Clouds. And when I'm on the daily time frame, I always have um, the, the 55 EMA Cloud in grey and the 89 in um, purple there. So they're non-linear support and resistance zones, and you'll usually find 95% of the time one of these will hold. You see how sticky this 89 was. I'm going to go and have a look at a new one in a minute and then starts to move up. It's just something I like to have extra on the chart as well. Then for entry for this, we, we have these uh, EMAs, but these are in advance. You can see this the, on the right hand side. The green is the 6-4 moving average high and the red is a 6-4 moving average low. So the green is for entries for long, the red is for entries for short. Um, and a conservative entry for the fifth wave move is when we break out of this 6-4 uh, moving average high. So my entry was 10.17. Above the 6-4 moving average high, um, I, I used this candle here where the cursor is to adjust, you know, there was a little pivot there, so I wanted to make sure above that. So from the following candles, anything out of there would have been out of the 6-4 moving average high and above here. And then it's just a matter of uh, managing the trade. And again, a good way to do this is these EMA clouds. You see how we have that initial impulse move up. We pull back, we find support at the 55 EMA cloud. And this happens a lot. Then we push through and hit that fifth wave target zone. So that's how this one worked uh, with a trade that's already happened. And again, I, I actually made videos uh, for this back in sort of end of November, beginning of December for VT uh, and actually did a live session setting this one up. But next is PLD. So one of the first thing we need to uh, recognize, okay, I'm going to go through the setup for this now. So I've got this, uh, when we're last time in the oversold zone, it's the start of this current trend. So with the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite, we can look at the bar number 
there and 6001 in that top left corner it, where it says W5T bar number. If I move the cursor, you'll see that's where the low is, 6001. So I'll go in the Elliott Wave and I change that to 6001. I just want to isolate the current uh, trend in reality. Um, let it do its thing. So then you can see it's labeled a one, two, three, and a four. Okay, so we're trade, we want to trade that fifth wave. So this is the criteria now for us to set this up. The first thing we look at, stochastic. False breakouts on the top, really strong third wave move, which we would expect. Then we've pulled back against that in the oversold zone, and it's crossing over, ready to go. And then we need to measure the the uh, the Elliott wave oscillator. This is simply done with uh, our fib retracement. First thing we do is put it on the zero line, and then we move it up to the highest point on the oscillator during the wave three, just there. And we can see at the moment we're, we're between 90 and 140. So the behavior for this wave four is good. Just simple steps need to keep following and repeating. So we've got the potential now of the fifth wave target zone being printed. We found support here. Uh, we had a reject of those lows. It tipped on the, uh, the 89 EMA cloud yesterday uh, and rejected those lows in the amber zone as well. So 80% probably is going to go in here in that fifth wave target zone. Now you can see the 6-4 moving average high currently is all the way up here. So one thing we can do with this is if we've got a very orderly wave 4, and this is orderly, uh, we can use what we call a regression trend channel. So I'm going to put that on there. With a regression trend channel, we go from 3 to 4. And what we look for here is a Pearson's R of 0.9 or above. This is 98%. So this is what we call almost a picture-perfect profit-taking way for pullback. So we can be more aggressive if we want to with the entry here. So for me, an aggressive entry is going to make sure I clear this... Um, 55 EMA cloud. I'm going to look left. I've got two big wicks on this pivot here. So what I'm going to do is just to help me, I'm just going to draw in and join those two wicks together. And that's going to be like a little bit of a resistance zone there. So I want to make sure that uh, I'm above there for the entry. So I can work out my risk to reward and entry using the trend based FIB extension. I'm going to click just underneath the wave for where my stop's going to be. The entry is probably going to be around about 157.68. And then we can see the risk to reward to that uh, fifth wave target zone is over 1 to 2. So good risk to reward. Wave 4, we've looked at the stochastic, we've looked at the oscillator, pullback zones. We've used those little EMA clouds as, a, as an extra uh, sort of benefit, if you like, just to make sure uh, we've got good rejection there. It's tested the bottom end of this channel I've drawn on the chart as well. So we're looking good for, a, 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 you know, what we would say is an aggressive entry. Now, if we hang around here and we don't really push up over the next few days, you will notice that the 6-4 moving average line probably will come down uh, below what we what we deem as a sensible entry so that will help in that case as well but right now this is how I've set it up using that uh, extra Elliott wave indicator suite hopefully that little tour of a of a trade that's already happened uh, and then I've set up and then obviously setting up this one helps you understand how this works well, Elliott wave can be quite complicated what I've tried to do is have this uh, indicator suite developed so you can follow the same rules. Isolate at the start of the current trend. Look if there's a wave four. Check the behavior of that wave four, then look for the entry strategy for that very high probability fifth wave trade. Hopefully that helps. Speak to you all soon.